Uh, it's really nice to be with you, Sadhguru. I wanted to know about Adiyogi, because I've learned and I studied some yoga for years, and I never heard about Adiyogi except from you. Oh, you thought Madonna invented yoga, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the word Adiyogi means the first yogi. We don't know the exact time, but it's somewhere over fifteen thousand years ago. That much we know because of certain… Uh, certain relics we have found and certain things that have been said, certain astronomical uh, phases that they have talked about. Based on this, we estimate it's over fifteen thousand years ago, we don't know the exact time. So the significance of Adi Yogi is this, for the first time for the human beings, he said, if you are willing to strive, you can cross all the limitations that nature has set up for you. Only thing is if you're willing to strive. And above all, the most important thing of this is, he's the first one. I, I don't want to take the credit away from the English people. Uh, <laughs> Charles Darwin spoke about evolution about hundred and fifty years ago. You had a two hundredth birth anniversary recently. So, uh, Adiyogi spoke of evolutionary process over fifteen thousand years ago. He spoke in a different language. When they asked how life happened, what is its beginning, what is its end, when his disciples asked him, he said, the first form of life was fish. Second form of life, he said, is a turtle of amphibious life. That means life is moving out of water, finding its way on the land. You… Indian people know about the nine avatars. Hmm? The next one is… Uh, an animal usually is called a wild boar because wild boar is supposed to be the most physical creature among the mammals. So he says it's a wild boar. Next one is half man, half animal. Next one is a dwarfed man. Next one is a full-fledged man but emotionally volatile man. Next one is a peaceful man. Next one is a loving man. Next one is a meditative man. The next one which is yet to come is supposed to be a mystical man. That could be you. Because, because if you pull out a small thing in your hand and start speaking to somebody in India or America, you're quite mystical. If you only… <laughs> yes. I'm saying if only you had a phone hundred years ago, you could claim your God and people would have believed it. <laughs> yes or no? So. He is not talking about individual people, he is talking about different stages of evolution. If you look at what Adi Yogi spoke, in many ways it runs absolutely parallel to what Charles Darwin spoke hundred and fifty years ago. So he spoke about evolution and he said, till now evolution happened without your consent. Now you have the privilege to decide how far you want to evolve. This is the… he said, this is the most significant aspect of being human is this, that you decide your evolution. When you are a monkey, uh, it's not my statement, it's Charles Darwin, okay? <laughs> when you were a monkey, you did not decide, I want to become a human being. Nature just pushed you on for whatever reasons. But now that you are a human being, now you can decide what kind of a human being you want to be. This moment you can be like a brute, Next moment you, you can be godlike. Both are possible for you right here. So he said the most significant dimension of being human is you determine your evolution. This is the only creature on the planet who has that freedom to do that. He said this is the most important thing and he gave one hundred and twelve methods through which a human being can evolve to their ultimate nature. So that's why Adiyogi. Namaskaram Sadhguru. I would like to know about uh, science of consecration and if I'm worthy of knowing it, how do I go about it? Oh <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we must uh, congratulate uh, Yelda <laughs> because in the next three weeks uh, she will be a mother. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
this is terrible gender discrimination <laughs> because only women are ever allowed this privilege <laughs> <laughs> so, she was talking to me about how she is conscious when, when there is a situation in any place, given place, without any logic to it, conscious of certain energies and how different people and different forms and different spaces impact you. So the science of consecration is just this. The best material to consecrate is a human being. It… because of all the physical forms on this planet, this is the most evolved physical form. The easiest thing to consecrate is a human being. But the problem with the human being is, every few minutes they'll make a U-turn. You can consecrate them right now, by tomorrow morning we don't know. So first of all, to get them committed to stay with whatever is given to them is a big issue especially in today's world. Because of that, we consecrate other forms. We always want to choose a form or a substance, first of all, which is of the highest density possible because physical form, its strength and its integrity depends upon its density. So we normally solidify mercury to do this. This is called as rasavaidya, which means it is the technology of solidifying mercury. People think it's a miracle. No, it's not a miracle. We use mercury as a process of consecration. The idea is it will change the very energy in which you are. Well, today our modern science is still busy studying physical things. Everything physical about you has been gathered from outside, isn't it so? Hello? What you call as my body is just a piece of this planet you slowly gather it by the food that you eat. So if everything physical about you is just something else, not you, what you gathered cannot be you. What is you? Definitely there is a dimension beyond physicality. If you ignore that, there's simply no life. But right now, still the logic, the human logic which thinks it is scientific is still at this level of logic that except what I can measure on the instrument does not exist. So actually all of you do not exist <laughs> because you cannot be measured. This happened to me, I don't subject myself to these indignities anymore. <laughs> Way back because of some obligation I had to… I was in some institute, they said we want to measure your gamma waves. I didn't know I had gamma waves <laughs> <laughs> They said, no, there are gamma waves in your brain, we will measure it. So they put fourteen electrodes into my body and they said, uh, meditate. I said, I don't know how to meditate. <laughs> they said, you teach everybody meditation. Yes, I do because they don't know how to sit still <laughs> If you want, I will sit still. But this is the whole problem. Their problem is they want what kind of meditation? They want a name and the process and they want to measure the result. So I am not going to give them that pleasure. I said, if you want, I'll sit still. So I simply sat. After about twenty minutes, with some metallic object, they're hitting that funny place in your elbow, you know, yeah. where it hurts most <laughs> Then I thought it's part of their experiment and I sat there. <laughs> then they're hitting my ankle, my knee. It became quite consistent and painful <laughs> Then I opened my eyes and said, am I doing something wrong? Why am I being beaten <laughs> They said, no, uh, according to our uh, instruments, you are dead <laughs> I said, uh, this is a great diagnosis you have <laughs> But then they thought through and they said, uh, no, it looks like your brain is dead. <laughs> I said, I will stay with the first opinion. <laughs> I am dead like this is okay with me. Brain dead if you give me a certificate. <laughs> That's not going to be good. Why I am saying this is, the essential life that you are, you think you are going to measure it in some instrument? Only physical processes will measure, isn't it? And you know, everything physical about you is from outside. It's not yours, hmm? It's not yours, it's just a piece of the planet. So, 
you can't be measured so you don't exist. What a great conclusion are you making? So what is consecration? Is a dimension of energy which is not physical in nature, but it's life, concentrated life, let's say. Consecration is a way of creating a very concentrated life process. If you walk in, it's like that. So, in certain cultures, particularly in India, every street we consecrated at one time. But people slowly misunderstood thinking these are temples for worship, whatever, it all went into all kinds of things. But still there are fantastic spaces of consecration in that culture, you must come and experience this. These days they are measuring some bio stuff and all, they are saying some fantastic things happening, I don't know what their meters are. But I know this, Yelda is saying she knows this, if you walk into a space, you know how alive or dead that space is. So is it measurable by something? No. Only life knows life. When life meets life, it knows. When life meets death, it knows. <laughs> is there some instrument to measure this? No. Because all your instruments can only measure physical processes. So consecration is the concentrated life process. No human being should live in unconsecrated spaces. If you care for humanity, especially children, especially children below fourteen years of age, believe me, if you make sure they spend a certain amount of time in consecrated spaces, you will not have any of this nonsense about adol adolescence problems. See, right now, Toddler, if you're an infant, diaper problems, toddler means he's running away problems, adolescent means some other problem, middle age means crisis, old age means horrible. <laughs> when are you going to live, I'm asking <laughs> You're looking at life process as a problem. It's not a problem. You're making it a problem because you're trying to fit life into your intellect. No, your intellect fits into this life perfectly well. If you try to fit this life into this intellect, it's not going to work. So consecration is a dimension and a science and a technology with which you concentrate life in such a way, if you walk in, you… whole energy system bursts forth. You will see we have created spaces like this. If people just walk in, sheer intensity, simply tears start flowing. They don't know why. Simply the intensity of the place, simply tears start coming. You must every day, your cheeks should be washed with tears of love, joy and ecstasy. If this doesn't happen, you're not living yet. <laughs>